Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is a brief introduction and a summary of a paper I have written recently entitled Islamic Alternatives to Secular Moral Foundations of Moral Modern Economics. This is will be forthcoming in Journal of King Abdulaziz University Islamic Economics for discussion by several authors. We start with the discussion of a famous essay by Amartya Sen on poverty and famine, and this essay analyzes the causes of four major famines. So there are two possibilities. The natural and obvious possibility is that uh, famines are caused by scarcity. There's no food, so people starve. But Amartya Sen found that this was not the case. In all of the four major famines he analyzed, food availability did not decline significantly. So he came to the conclusion that the problem was not that there was not enough food. The problem was that there was not enough compassion. At the height of the Bengal famine, uh, rice was being shipped out of the area to other places where people could pay for it. And people were starving because they did not have the money to buy. So basically, the society does not consider them entitled to food unless they have the money to buy the food. So how did we end up building a society in which people who are starving are not considered to be entitled to food? Uh, this comes from economic theory. Uh, the theory says supply and demand. The person who has the most money and who is demanding something and uh, willing to pay more for it, he should get it. Products should be sold to the highest bidder. Economics claims to be a positive science, objective, a description of reality. But it, it's actually a disguised ideological argument. And it justifies the exploitation of labor land and the accumulation of wealth by capitalists, making the principle that the one who has the most money has the right to buy means uh, in enriching and um, privileging the rich over the poor. How did this happen? This is a very complex history uh, of Europe which led the, to the breakdown of the conception of society as an organic whole where we are all working together for common purpose and common good. And uh, because of uh, religious warfare in Europe, uh, the sex society was reconceptualized as being secular as different people have different goals and they just have to learn to live together in peace <coughs> under a rule of law. Let everybody be free to follow his own goals. Now since the goals are not specified, then we say that all right, allow freedom so that um, people can accumulate wealth and they can have the power to do whatever it is they like to do. But in a very strange uh, but important transition, these intermediate goods, wealth is not useful for itself. It's useful when you use it to do something. And similarly, freedom is not useful for itself. Uh, it is useful when you are free to do what you like to do. But these intermediate goals were converted to the purpose of life in a secular society. And this was of immense importance in shaping modern society. The capitalist society which emerged in Europe had the founding principles of competition, individualism, hedonism. It's all about since everybody is free they, and, and they have no responsibility to others. Uh, it's all about pursuing pleasure, power, profits for yourself. And it's all a competition. Everybody is trying to do the same. And so we are in competition with each other. This is very strongly opposed to the Islamic principles which are used to build a society based on cooperation, social responsibility, we are need, need to take care of each other, and generosity, those who have more should give to those who are in need. In Islamic societies, these principles of cooperation, generosity, and social responsibility are implemented in three dimensions, one on the personal basis, and other in the legal framework, and then the third in the institutional structure of the society. On the individual level, behavior is fashioned by the search for excellence in conduct. And this has been modeled for us by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who is the most excellent and the perfect model for us. And his characteristics are that he is the mercy to all nations. 
Rahmatul lil alameen and his heart was full of compassion for the suffering of others and he loved us all so much that he cried for us in the nights and he instilled the spirit in of service to all of the creation out of the love of God. So the Quran mentions that they feed the poor for the love of Allah and they feed others even when they are themselves hungry. So these are the characteristics created by the Prophet ﷺ in his followers. The legal framework for Islam is captured in the Sharia which is a long and complex body. I will just point to one important uh, aspect of this and that is the concept of justice. Justice in Islam is not adversarial that we are fighting each other I want to get my right and you want to get your right uh, actually I just want to get my way and you want to get your way uh, justice is not a concern of anyone but in Islam both parties are interested in implementing the law of Allah we want to find out what is the haq what is the what is the decision which will please Allah and that is the so there is a it's in principle a cooperative system but uh, in the western system it is an adversarial system we are trying to win regardless of who is right finally we come to the institutional frameworks all these are high sounding ideals and they are difficult to implement so there are methods there are means there are structures in society which are built to ensure that these actually get translated into practice so one of the key institutional structures is the waqf in Islam which, which, uh, in which everybody who has more money than they need they are encouraged to build corporations or organizations which will provide charity to the poor they will provide education, health, take care of orphans, widows and this is what was the case in Islamic society for a thousand years nobody was, who was needed education was asked to bring money to do this uh, the society took care of its own as opposed to this the spirit of banks is the spirit of hoarding and accumulation someone who has more than he needs he just puts it in the bank and ignores the plight of others and this is creates a society of selfishness where we look away from the person who is suffering and we enjoy our uh, luxury the spirit of cooperation versus competition can be demonstrated in two institutions and, and there are many other but this is just an example. So the concept of takaful in Islam is based on taking care of each other in times of need. So we pool some money and uh, whenever somebody is in need in the group uh, this money is taken to help him. As opposed to this insurance is based on taking advantage of the needy and the number of insurance scams and frauds is just uncountable and they are listed and basically the insurance company takes advantage of people who are uh, suffering it offers them contracts it takes money from the poor who are in need and does not provide for them when when they when they are in need so it's all based on profits on both sides and there is moral hazard and there are many other problems which occur Finally, the Islamic firms are oriented towards service. Their goal is to provide service. Money is made as an object in order to be able to provide service. So in the Islamic era, uh, there were guilds which were uh, large organizations and their uh, responsibility was to provide service to the people. They were efficient and they were uh, based on uh, religious principles and similarly in the firm structure once the goal is providing service then everybody has an equal is, uh, is uh, in Islamic terms an equal partner even the person who is cleaning out the bathrooms in a masjid he is providing service and it is an act of worship and this makes labor meaningful as opposed to this the western uh, uh, corporation keeps profits above everything there are no ethics in the pursuit of profit so the Nestle Corporation sells baby milk powder to uh, families where it knows that babe, large, large numbers of people will die, large number of babies will die because of this baby powder. But since it makes profits, they do it. Similarly, the destruction of 
countries like Iraq and Libya was carried out for the sake of oil profits. And in the firm structure, uh, the laborers sell their money, sell their lives for the sake of money. They have no part in what is done. They are, they, their lives become meaningless uh, because they are just wage slaves. And the boss is the owner and the, he is, uh, stands above them. So the structure of the firm based on profits and money is radically different from the structure of the firm based on service in Islamic conception. So the key aspects of the paper is that modern economic theory claims to be positive, objective, factual. It just describes the world, but this is not true. Uh, modern economic theory sets up, has, a, has, a, has conceived of the world as, in a certain way, and this is a normative framework, but it is, it pretends to be objective. And the purpose of modern economics is to justify and idealize capitalism. So exploitation of laborers, concentration of wealth, and uh, the many other evils of capitalism are portrayed as being ideal forms. And these moral foundations are disastrously bad. And this means that today we have an opportunity to create an alternative built on the sound and just and equitable moral foundations of Islam. To create an alternative to the uh, economic systems which are causing massive damage to both humanity and the planet.